G'day, Ziggy D here. Day one of the first season of Diablo 3 Reaper of Souls is uh, over now. I had a good time leveling. I did uh, just a one session, did about probably a bit under nine hours of play time and managed to get to 67. Nothing particularly spectacular, especially when you stack up against some of the people using uh, some of the particular bounties to level very, very quickly, even in less than an hour or so. But uh, I had a pretty good time, and I'm pretty familiar with the process of leveling a Hardcore Demon Hunter now. I actually did a practice run uh, a while before the ladders went live as well. Practicing on a Demon Hunter, starting from scratch, gearing up, you know, using different skills and things like that. So uh, in this video, I just thought I'd share with you guys, because it's something I get asked a lot, what are good skills for leveling the Demon Hunter, how to set up your Demon Hunter as you're leveling through the different stages. Now, builds in Diablo 3 in general are very gear dependent, and if I get certain items, I will change my build around those to best leverage those, or to best uh, take advantage of the situation I'm currently in, to sort of best farm the situation. And there's also this kind of like a meter, a gearing meter that I have going on in the back of my head when I'm leveling a hardcore character. And uh, my build changes depending on that. It starts off at the left side with undergeared, or the right side for you guys apparently, but the left side starts at undergeared, then there is geared, so which is appropriate for your difficulty, and then there's overgeared for your difficulty. Now, there's two things you can do. When you hit the overgeared or the undergeared mark, you can change the difficulty, or you can change your build. Generally, what I'll, I, my, I usually try and keep my character in the geared to slightly overgeared category. If you're, spe if you're fully, if you're really overgeared, then you should probably change your difficulty up, or maybe you've gotten really lucky, or maybe you've been spending too much time gearing and not enough time just farming, because what happens is mobs level scale with you in Diablo 3 now, and uh, if you're leveling very quickly but not gearing, you'll get undergeared, but if you're gearing a lot but not leveling very quickly, then you will get overgeared. And you want to keep that sort of just in the geared to overgeared category, I think. That's the nice balance between safe and fast, and uh, that's pretty much where I try to lie most of the time. However, if I'm falling into like the geared or the undergeared category, I will change my build to have higher uh, burst damage, higher uh, higher damage overall skills uh, in a smaller AOE. And uh, when the game gets more difficult, I'll also do that same thing. So that's usually something like Cluster Arrow, especially with the Loader for Bear Rune, and Entangling Shot Justice is Served with Cull the Weak. This is this three combination here. This is one of the best, I think, one of the most efficient dam uh, damage boosting setups. And uh, it's very nice when you get towards the later sections of the game, so game, so in like level 60 to level 70, this is a very nice setup. And uh, and before that, if your character's not very well geared, I'll often use something like Cluster Arrow that has uh, very high damage but in a smaller AoE. So you sacrifice some of your AoE to be able to get enough damage to burst, burst down elites. However, when you're in the overgeared category, so when your character is very well geared, maybe you got a f lucky and you got a few legendaries dropped, like for example, at one point I got like a Buruza. Uh, when that when that sort of thing happens, you will change to higher AOE specs. So I will often use things like Bowler Shot with the AOE rune. So we go into just Bowler Shot just here with Volatile Explosives, which in improves the AOE. And I'll use something like Chakram with Twin Chakrams. Chakram, I think, is one of the best leveling skills in the game for Demon Hunter. I prefer it uh, like wholeheartedly over Multishot. Multishot is decent, but I think Twin Chakrams is amazing. And uh, it's uh, it's less damage. Than something like, uh, than something like cluster arrow, for example. But the AOE is really good. So when your character is already kind of one-shotting stuff or one or killing very quickly, you want to maximize your AOE instead of maximizing your burst damage. So that's kind of how I uh, gear my character, how my how I change my skill setup, my build setup, depending on gearing. And this is, should be fairly organic. It's a pretty organic leveling experience. It's kind of a fun sort of mini game in itself. But other than that, uh, I'll go over some pretty good general leveling skills. I thought I like Hungering Arrow a lot uh, early in the game. This is what I'll stick with for the most part. Entangling Shot becomes good later once you get Cold the Weak. Cold the Weak synergizes ex exceptionally well with co uh, Tangling Shot. Entangling Shot with um, Chain Gang, for example, early in the game. Uh, early in the game, uh, to one shot will chain up to four enemies, and like a, you can two shots will chain an entire pack basically. So what happens then is every single thing in that pack will take extra damage, 20% extra damage, and then you can unleash some cluster arrows. To, or some chakrams, and that's usually what I'll do right there. But before that, Hungering Arrow is a very good single target and allows you to use, like, very early game. I set up usually Hungering with Puncturing Arrow and Chakram with just... It, you'll often not have um, a rune very early on. You want to equip Chakram as soon as you get it, but Twin Chakrams as soon as you get that first rune there. This is what I'll pretty much use for the rest of the game whenever I use Chakram. Twin Chakrams just here. You get this nice and early. So usually I'll use Hungering Arrow and Chakram for that setup just there. 
Uh, otherwise, I'll use bowlers, especially if you find something like uh, Buriza. This is a good example of changing my build depending on the gear I farm. find. I found a Emmy's Duffel, which makes bowlers explode instantly, and Buriza, which makes your projectile pierce two additional times. With bowler shot, this is insane, because what happens is you fire a bowler. I used Imminent Dune, but I used Volatile Explosives until I got that. But essentially, it'll explode instantly as you hit mobs, and you'll hit three mobs total if, as you shoot through a pack. And each time it pierces through an enemy and hits another enemy, it explodes. So you get three explosions per shot of bowler, which is exceptional damage, especially once you have that imminent boon rune. So that's a good example of changing depending on your gearing situation. So, other skills I like. Uh, I, I pretty much stick with Hungering Arrow, Entangling Shot, and Bowlers. I don't think Evasive Fire or Grenades are very good for leveling. Uh, and Bowlers is something I use, as I said, when I'm overgeared. When I'm less geared, I use Entangling Shot. And early in the game, I use Hungering Arrow to boost my single target damage. In terms of secondary effects, I, I, I very rarely use uh, any of, like, Multi-Shot or Strafe. Multi-Shot is liked by a lot of people, but I prefer Twin Chakrams in pretty much all situations. Rain of Vengeance is a nice extra one to throw on, but generally I prefer Fan of Knives, so we're going to Fan of Knives just here. Fan of Knives is great, I always run Fan of Knives while leveling as Demon Hunter. Uh, I pretty much ran it as soon as I got it until, like, I'm still running it, and I'll, I'll continue running it until I settle into my endgame spec. And uh, generally you'll run this with just Pinpoint Accuracy when you unlock that, You'll un then you'll run bladed armor because this is a very nice sort of defensive setup for hardcore. And eventually you'll be you'll be using uh, it is this one here, fan of daggers. Fan of daggers has a three second stun. It's a guaranteed three second stun. This makes it an excellent defensive skill and an excellent offensive skill. This will let you burst down elites very quickly. You run next to the elite, you pop Fan of Daggers, or you get into a bad situation, you pop Fan of Daggers, it stuns everything. It's a great lifesaver. It saved my life a few times in a few hairy situations, and uh, the damage is really good on it as well. 620 damage in 20 yards. Very, very solid skill all round, and one I love running for leveling in hardcore. Smokescreen is not very fun, but it's something you must always have on your bar as a hardcore demon hunter. You won't need it 90% of the time, However, it's still useful to have. Generally, I'll use Displacement early on, then Lingering Fog, and then once Healing Vapors is available, I'll use Healing Vapors, because I find that a little bit more, to have a bit more utility, and I can use it a bit more often. Uh, if you're using Vault as well, as a mobility skill, and that's certainly a good option, you'll want to use Lingering Fog instead of Healing Vapors, because it gives you that higher duration for disciplines spent, and it's also a good idea at that point to consider, instead of using something like Companion, to use Preparation, so that gives you uh, the worst thing is to be vaulting towards the next pack, have your discipline be empty, get into a bad situation, get chain frozen, and not have discipline. So having preparation as a backup is essential if you're running both vault and smokescreen. If you're just running smokescreen, like I did most of the time leveling, then uh, you could just be a little bit careful with your discipline and only use it when you're in danger to get to break those CCs, to get out of bad situations and stuff like that, and that's pretty much good. But uh, I think as a hardcore demon hunter, you always want smokescreen on your bar. It's just mandatory. It's better to have and not need it than to need it and not have it for sure for sure okay so next up i usually use uh companion right from when i get spider companion i don't the raven companions useless don't worry with that but spider companion is quite useful especially if you're rocking cold a week it'll slow everything on the screen basically and give you a lot more extra damage there so i typically do run that and then i later switch to bat companion or wolf companion bat and wolf are pretty much nice and easy to switch between and uh, these just uh, help you clear a bit faster, basically. So nothing really too special just there. Once I get to level 61, I start using Vengeance with pers Personal Mortar. And then I eventually switch to Side Cannons for the healing as well. It's pretty nice. But uh, Seether's is good too. Any of the runes for Vengeance are just fine, really. Instead of Vengeance, if you're undergeared a bit, you can use Sentries. What I will do is, as I engage Elite, I'll drop those Sentries, and they are nice, efficient extra damage. You can just use those with pretty much any of the runes, really doesn't matter. But uh, that's just nice extra damage if you're a little bit undergeared. Another really good option, and one that I used quite extensively, is Marked for Death. The normal Marked for Death rune and most of the other ones are pretty bad. Mortal Enemy is okay for taking down like bosses and elites and stuff like that, but for the most part, Contagion is amazing. Contagion is probably one of the best uh, Marked for Death runes for leveling in the game. Uh, it's one of the best skills for leveling in the game in general, I think, and I did run this for a long time until I got Vengeance, and then I eventually switched over to Vengeance instead of this. But uh, basically what you do is you curse something with Marked for Death, curse something you'll kill first, so if there's a pack of elites and there's some scorpions nearby, curse the scorpion, burst the scorpion down, and it'll start spreading. It'll start proliferating to two nearby enemies, to two nearby enemies, to, me, to and it'll spread throughout the pack very quickly as you kill stuff. And this gives a big damage boost as well. So this is 20% uh, extra damage, one-fifth extra damage for those monsters, and it chains throughout the pack, and it'll pretty much go with you. If you keep killing monsters packs, it'll chain throughout all of the packs. Very nice damage increase. 
and a very nice uh, skill all round. That is what I'll rock a lot of the time. So that's it for the main skills. Let's go through passives, the passives that I rate. Tactical Advantage, you use as your first passive until you get it. Thrill of the Hunt's kind of useless. As soon as you get Blood Vengeance, though, this will become a permanent thing on your toolbar. This just improves your leveling speed by a huge deal. Uh, getting those health globes is something you should be doing anyway. And uh, when you do, you'll be able to get that extra hatred to put out those extra cluster arrows or those extra shackums. And when you're fighting a boss and he's popping out health globes, you'll just run towards the health globe and keep DPSing. It really is a massive DPS increase, even though it doesn't increase your tooltip DPS. Next up, um, I think Cull the Weak is one that I usually run as soon as it becomes available as well. I'll run that as my second passive, so Blood Vengeance, Cull the Weak go very nicely. As long as you're using Entangling Shot or the Spider, you usually have enough. You can also use, um, there is Caltrops earlier on, you can run Caltrops with Cull the Weak. But uh, generally I just use Entangling Shot with uh, Chain Gang or the Spider Rune to be able to uh, proc that for the most part. Uh, if you don't want to run Call of the Week, you're not running one of those other abilities. I quite like Hot Pursuit. If you're running Chakrams, for example, something that attacks very fast in a large AOE, you throw out a pack of sh you throw out a pair of Chakrams, and then you just keep running a big run speed boost. This is also a really nice clear speed boost, uh, especially for doing bounties. I really like Hot Pursuit quite a lot. But uh, other than that, Archery is always a solid choice. I like Perfectionist as a defensive choice. It's a huge defensive boost and allows you to use your smokescreen and vaults a little bit more often. So that's a nice one to run in general, but uh, just a nice safe option for hardcore. So other than that, just in terms of gearing, gearing is very simple in Diablo 3 Ripper of Souls now. Uh, you can pretty much just look for the green arrows. If something is an, a defensive and an offensive boost, then wear it, and most of the time that will be the case. I tend to prioritize a little bit DPS a little bit more these days because uh, I guess I'm a bit more experienced in it, and it's pretty easy. I play it hard difficulty, which, by the way, is a nice balance between um, leveling speed. I never felt hard. Felt hard was easy occasionally, and I maybe could have jumped up to Master when I had a good set of legendaries, but hard seems to switch nicely as you're gearing level changes between uh, being being just difficult enough but giving you a lot of XP and just just easy enough but you know you can clear fast so I quite liked hard difficulty but uh, generally I when I'm playing hard I prioritize DPS a little bit more you if you're going go, going to go for a high difficulty for fun reasons then you can obviously prioritize tankiness a little bit more but generally for your weapon you just want to go with uh, the highest base damage and dexterity if you can get a socket great but don't really stress about it too much because a lot of the time you'll be finding an upgrade again soon and uh, misty crafting for sockets and stuff is often not worth the time it takes just keep upgrading uh, those weapons as you can make sure to use abuse and abuse the blacksmith as much as you can every time I level like two or three times I go in level up the blacksmith a few points and then uh, you see what gears available and upgrade whatever is new make sure to keep your Templar upgraded as well I recommend Templar as the follower and I just use everything on the left side here it's good stuff these are all really good hardcore ones and I like Templar with Demon Hunter in general so a very solid choice and uh, otherwise, you know, for the rest of your gear, just try and get Dexterity Vitality for leveling. You don't really need to worry about crit chance or crit damage. Even up, all the way up to 70, you can get carry just on base stats, base damage, and Dexterity all the way up to level 70. And then once you get to level 70, that's when you start looking for crit chance and crit damage and all of that. So uh, pretty simple stuff. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed this and found this a bit helpful if you're leveling up a new hardcore Demon Hunter. It's good fun. Probably one of my favorite... Well, it is my favorite class in the game. And uh, is pretty enjoyable playing in hardcore, I think. The character plays well in hardcore. And it's um, it's not quite as easy as something like a Witch Doctor, but uh, it feels quite fun to do. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.